Hi, this is Becky Nunn with Nunn Design, guest designer at Beataholic. In this video, I'd like to show you how you can use Nunn Design resin and mix it with the casting craft opaque pigments and use the Nunn Design flat tags to create fun pieces like you're seeing here. Here are some of the items that you're going to need in order to colorize your resin and put them on the flat tags. You'll want to select some of the Nun Design flat tags. There's a variety of ones that you can choose from. I actually have some pieces that I put an additional hole onto, and I'm going to be shooting a video showing you how to add a hole so that you could make even a bracelet like this um, using the flat tags. The color that I'm going to make is I'm going after this pale dogwood, and for that I'll need some casting craft opaque pigments in the white, brown, and the red, and the Nun Design resin kit. The Nun Design flat tags are cast in lead-free pewter and then plated with 24 karat gold, 0.999 fine silver, and copper. We also put an oxidization on the pieces, so I like to use some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip to wash the pieces prior to putting the resin on them. Lay out a couple of business cards. It'll provide a working surface so that when you are finished washing them, you can put them onto the business cards and this allows you to pick up and move around the cards and not just disturb the resin pieces as they're curing. Open up your rubbing alcohol. Put a little bit on the end of your Q-tip. And then rub the surface and if there is any oxidization, it'll release onto your toothpick, or excuse me, onto your Q-tip, and then you will have a nice clean surface. We're just double checking that all of our pieces are very clean prior to putting resin on it. It'll help the resin adhere to the pieces easier and also, it's just a good discipline to get into because sometimes, sometimes you might uh, have a bezel because this technique will also work great with a, pouring it into a bezel and you might have some on the side lip of your bezel, some of that oxidization. So we're just cleaning all the pieces up. I chose these pieces. Um, I punched an additional hole into them so that I could link them into like a charm bracelet or into um, just a simple ID style bracelet. Uh, but I'm actually gonna use this side of the piece. As you see on some of the flat tags, um, these organic looking ones, they have an interesting pattern that make it look really handmade, but on the back side, this is uh, nice and flat, making it super easy to pour the resin onto it. And uh, for this one, I'm gonna show uh, us doing it onto this back side. In this example, you can see that it had, um, it started out, uh, let's see if I can find this piece. This has a really sharp sloping edge on it. And um, this is great, but you want to let your resin cure for quite some time and it's nice and thick before you start using it on pieces like this where there's a slide, a really strong edge, just so that when you're starting out or a beginner, um, uh, it's best to start with the, the flat side, and then as you get more experience or as your resin starts to get thick, um, then you would want to use this side. I'll show you what I mean in a moment. So now we have our little tags ready to go. We've cleaned them with a little bit of rubbing alcohol, so putting our top back on, and we're ready to move on to mixing our resin. So let's set these aside and let's bring in all of the things that we're going to need to mix our resin. Inside the Nun Design resin kit, you'll have a part A and a part B that you'll be using, and you'll have some mixing cups. You'll need two of the mixing cups, uh, a couple of toothpicks, and let's see what else. You'll have your stir stick, and I often reuse my stir stick, so I had wiped this side off after I was done last time making some resin, and I can use this side over here. And let me just show you, um, we're going to be making that dogwood. So it's going to take a couple of these colors, these three different colors. But I have on the Nun Design website, and I'll share with the Beautaholic people so that they can show it to you, 
all these different formulas for mixing uh, the non-designed resin with the variety of different colors of the, of the casting craft to create all kinds of looks like you're seeing here. And we're just doing this dogwood one, and as you can see, there's a formula written out for that panatone color. And this is what we're going to be working off, is this, this formula. So we'll need the red, white, and the brown. So we'll keep that sheet out for ourselves. So we're also going to need to have some sort of timer before we mix our resin. So we're going to go ahead and set our timer for two minutes. That's the amount of time that we're going to need. Um, so that's ready to go. So the first step is we're going to pour the part A into the mixing cup up to the one tablespoon mark. And this has to be a one to one ratio, a full cup, two tablespoons worth in order to activate the resin and have you use it. So part A is up to the one tablespoon, so I have that very visible so that I can see it. Open up the lid, pour your resin in. I have some wet wipes handy in my lap so that I can wipe the lid when I'm done. As I start to get to that one tablespoon, one tablespoon mark, I'm starting to lighten up on my flow until I get right to that line kind of drizzling it in, and right when I get to that line, I lighten my flow by twisting the top of my cap, and I'm right at that one tablespoon mark. I like to use the wet wipe to wipe the top of my resin. Have that be nice and clean for the next time. Put the cap on, and now we're ready for the part B. Now we're moving it pouring it in and moving it up to the one, the two tablespoon mark, so we have a one to one exact ratio. So I'm pouring, 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 pouring. I'm getting right close to that mark, twisting my top, and right when I hit that line right there, we have exactly what we need. So wipe off the surface of the top, put the lid on, and now we have our resin. I like to always put my uh, resin on to plastic so I can keep my work or surface nice and clean. And I'm going to set my timer for two minutes. Get to see my family there. So I'm starting at two minutes. And then with the fat tongue depressor stir stick that's in your resin kit, you'll start to mix the resin together. And at first you'll see it's very... Uh, what is that? Goopy looking. The two colors are mixing together. And you're going to mix it for the full two minutes. And as you start to mix it, those two, part A and B, will be blend and it'll be clear. You will have bubbles in it, but it will be a clear mixture. So scrape the sides. If you go slow, you won't have a, a lot of overflow, but if you do, don't worry. You can just wipe it off with your wet wipe. And as you go along, you'll want to stop every now and then and scrape all of that excess resin back into the cup and then start to stir again. And continue this for the full two minutes. Once you've mixed your resin for the two minutes and your timer has gone off, go ahead and turn off the timer and then you're ready to add the colorants. So for this formula, we're using this dogwood, which has one tiny toothpick of red, eight toothpicks of white, and five toothpicks of brown. So let me show you what that formula means and how it works. I'm gonna move my resin up here, and I'm gonna pour a tiny bit of the, um, you can do it this way, you can pour it onto here or you can pick up the colorant from the actual top, but I like to pour it onto a surface. So I know I'm going to need a lot of white. And I know I'm going to need just a tiny bit of the brown, so I'm not going to pour that out. I'll just pick it up from the surface and I'm going to need a little bit of the red. So when you take the tops off of your pieces, make sure uh, off of your casting crafts, Try to remember to put the right color back on there because otherwise you'll contaminate the top part. So I have a full uh, amount of resin that I've mixed. 
And for the formula, you only need one teaspoon of the two-part resin. So I'm going to off-pour my uh, resin, my mixed resin, into this cup for the one teaspoon mark. This is why it's really nice to have a lot of pieces ready to go because as you mix this resin, you're going to want to use it wisely. And it only takes a small amount. So we have the one teaspoon mark of the resin already mixed. And we're going to go ahead and now add our casting crafts. But let me show you. One tiny toothpick of red looks like this. Because this is so incredibly potent, it's going to colorize my batch. So that's a tiny toothpick. So swirl that in. And then I like to lay my toothpicks right on this side right here. With each color, you're going to use a different color. You're going to use a different toothpick. So the next one is, is eight toothpicks worth of the white. So this is a toothpick. So you're going to go ahead and you can either do it this way where you add the eight toothpicks in like this, or you can actually, with time, you'll kind of have more confidence and you'll be able to squeeze it right into the mixture so that was three, I think, four. That was five, that was probably six. Seven and eight. And if I didn't get it right, you'll see me be able to adjust it as we go. And then for the brown, you're gonna wanna mix your, shake your brown up before you actually bring it to the surface like that. We only need five toothpicks worth of this. So it's not quite, uh, I'm gonna actually, I don't trust that. So I'm gonna actually use, that's five toothpicks. You saw how much I did of the white, but I don't need quite that much of this. I just know. So it's two, three, four, five, and five. So it is not exact, um, but I will see how I did. Now with another stir stick, I like to use um, the skinnier stir sticks for this and I often just will cut them or break them in half so I, I'll be able to use that stir stick multiple times. You mix these two colors together. Let's see how we did. That's what I thought. My brown was a little bit heavy. But it's actually looking pretty darn close to a pale dogwood. It's a little bit brown, but I like that color. Let's see, so this is kind of very similar, but you can see I added a little bit more brown. If I wanted to, I could add a little bit more white and add a little bit more red to get um, more of that exact match. So once your resin is mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and move these things off to the side. I can reuse those later. I'm gonna put my caps back onto my, my casting craft, opaque pigments. The right top going on to the right pieces. And now we're ready to move our resin pieces back in. These are the pieces that we're going to be covering up. I think we're probably gonna have to do these two right here so I can show you how to do those. All right, so you have your colorants that you're ready to go with and you have your pieces on the little cards so you can move them around. And I like to have multiple toothpicks ready to go so that I can, I can maneuver the pieces around while I'm colorizing the tags. So it only takes a very small amount of the casting craft onto these tags. So use, I'm gonna get this out of the way, so I'm gonna scrape it into the side here and put it on my other sheet. And then use your toothpick to pick up a little bit of the resin. I just dipped it inside of my resin and then twirled it to stop the stream of flow and then you place it onto the flat tag. When you're first starting, you're gonna to wanna to go slow because it's much easier to go slow and keep adding on than to have to keep on cleaning up. 
So I mentioned I put a second hole in this piece. This uh, flat tag normally comes with just one hole, and we're going to do that in another video. But when you start to get close to the edge where those holes are, you're going to just use your toothpick to guide it into place and move it around that edge right there. And you can see I have some bubbles on this in this resin, but don't worry about it. I'll show you how we're going to address that. If you want to, you can let this sit for uh, five minutes and it'll make the, um, the bubbles will naturally pop on their own. It uh, had a lot of bubbles in there because when I was mixing it quite vigorously, it added some additional air into there. So I'm using my toothpick to just drag the resin around to the side edges and around those holes. And then as I have that part done, I can just add a little bit more of the resin to bring up the dome. If this starts to fill, this is looking pretty close to, um, it could flow into that hole right there. What you'll want to do is just slightly move the, the piece and break that connection between this card and the resin and by slightly moving it, it'll break the seal that's uh, filled in there and you'll be able to um, have that um, hole not have the resin in it. So I'm gonna move this off a of camera and I'm gonna show you, you're going to use your breath to huff gently on the piece and that'll help the uh, release some of those air bubbles that are in the resin. So by just using my hot breath, you can see that it made all of those little bubbles that were in the resin release. And now you're ready to go on to the next one or whatever amount of pieces that you want to do. Once your pieces are fully cured, it'll take about 48 to 72 hours, depending where you're located, for the resins to be rock hard, and then you're ready for it to, for, to assemble them into finished jewelry. Here's some examples of how I used the Nundesign flat tags colorized resin with several of the Nundesign jump rings and some chain. On these two pieces where you see that the resin is only in a certain area or have two colors, I waited a little bit longer until my resin was quite thick before I placed it onto the flat tag. Then the resin will just stop wherever you drag it to, or if you put two colors together, it won't bleed together. They'll just stay separate. This is Becky Nunn with Nunn Design showing you how you can colorize resin, the Nunn Design resin with the opaque casting craft colorants, and put them on flat tags. I hope you enjoyed it.